I feel they all live by association. Like so you're saying all... we should start hunting at night? Well, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's where we go from here. Okay, okay. I don't think I don't think. You... The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Deer Grow. Man, it's almost food plot season, Jared, and Deer Grow is one of those products that has really changed the way that we plant food plots and the success we've seen from them. No doubt. I've been, you know, trying to plant food plots my, my entire you know, whitetail hunting career, which is a little shorter than yours, but the minute that I started or that I, you know, I realized that I could get Deer Grow back into some of these remote plots where I couldn't get lime or fertilizer, especially in the 50 pound bag, you know, format, mm -hmm. so everything was changed. You know, I could get into these spots uh, moving forward with a, with a backpack sprayer and that's since escalated to these 40 or 60 uh, gallon sprayers and we're doing upwards of you know five to ten acre food plots just with your grow and having phenomenal success yeah and i mean with the price of fertilizer lime diesel everything this year i mean what better way to get in there and grow a successful food plot at about a third of the cost check out deer grow at deergrow.com and we're back hey on our podcast episode 100 100 how about that how about that? That would be 100 weeks in a row of Hunter Podcast. Fewer than that. Oh, because right? we did some doubles? No. Nah. I'm not sure how that math adds Yeah, up. I don't know you either. But 100 Podcasts. 100 Podcasts. So if you're just tuning in now, you got a ways to catch up. 100 Hunter Podcasts. I started on 78. You did? Wow. How about that, Nick? Welcome to the party. Freaking 100, man. How crazy is that? We've been talking about it a while. We're like, oh, we should do something special. Uh, and then we're like, it's going to be November, so we're just like, it is be special. Hunting. It's October 26th. October 26th with a cold what, front running in. What more in. appropriate way? If you're listening to this, Nick, you're going to have to judge me on it. It's like sometime in November. We don't know because we might throw some doubles. Pretty sure the 15th. 15th of November. Okay. Pretty sure. If you're listening to this and it's 15th of November, Jared and I are killing big bucks in Kansas. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's right. We'll be out there for that. Um, but if you're not listening to this in the 15th of November, it's probably earlier. In which case, we're still going to be killing big bucks in Kansas soon. If I kill one tomorrow, I should probably just get in the truck and <laughs> go, go get a head start on her. We haven't really <laughs> seen that many big bucks in Kansas. I, and I'm not discouraged yeah. by that, but it's just, it's been quiet so far. Yeah. Um, that said, uh, you know, we do have a massive front blowing through here in Ohio, Kentucky, Pennsylvania. And if you're listening to this across the country, you know the same. It happened in Iowa yesterday on the 25th. Um, and so we're gearing up here to hunt Thursday and Friday, um, which I think will be two of the better days that we're going to have. It looks warm again after that. Not saying that deer aren't going to move because it's then November and deer will move. But uh, the next two days look like to be the best. And so... You spilled your coffee. Yep. Um, and so, you know, what we've got today. <laughs> you spilled your you coffee. You spilled your coffee. Uh, so we have guests. We have Johnny Stewart in today. Also a Pennsylvania boy. We've been on just like a massive Pennsylvania guy run because we're starting to find like, holy shit, there's other guys in Pennsylvania that like to kill big mature bucks. Mm -hmm. And so we've got Johnny to come on. Um, and we're going to really talk about kind of those strategies at this time of the year. And it, it you know, it's going to extend into the middle of November for sure. But this time of year of like, how aggressive should you be? Um, what do those key spots look for? And then, you know, how does a mature buck think? Like, what what is he thinking at this time of the year? And how the hell do we use that to our advantage to try to kill him? And that's kind of it. Let's get him on. All right. We got Johnny Stewart on the podcast. Appreciate you joining us this morning, man. Oh, glad to be here, guys. Nice to meet you. Well, another PA. <laughs> now boy. he's all calmed down. He's yeah. like, okay, well, so I, mean, I, was, I, yeah, I could be normal and you start talking to you. Uh, well, don't be normal. We don't uh, want any of that. Yeah, we don't want any of that. Trust yeah. me. Well, dude, what's so funny? I mean, first of all, it's like we're sitting, we're all sitting here. It's October 26th. And it's like, dude, we live for like these next three to four weeks. Johnny, like Johnny was just telling us he, he was up at camp last night. Just drove, drove like, you know, a couple hours back home, doing cranking some work, trying to get back up there tonight. Like sa same thing we're doing. Well, dude. you got to be, you, you got to be responsive and reactive, right, Johnny? I mean, at this time of year, you just talked about like how warm it was yesterday and stuff. Now we got this front coming through. I mean, if you couldn't hunt Thursday and Friday, meaning tomorrow and Friday, like, you know, you're definitely missing out. Man, I just shoot myself. <laughs> I, I was gonna say kill yourself, but that was a little darker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. It, it, it uh, and especially the older, you, like I'm 43, and it's like you, you look like you wait for this whole year, and it's like the older I get, the less years I have to do this, and it's like it makes me want to be there more and mm -hmm. not like 
if I don't have to sleep, I won't eat. I just need to, you know, but you know, live on a deer season. Too. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It comes down to all your prep all year and all your knowledge, putting all the pieces of the puzzle together yeah. and, you know, just get it. It yeah. takes, it takes everything you got to, I was, we were just talking with Jake Blenda this morning yeah. about, it's like, man, I'm, you know, I value physical fitness and exercise and like, you know, all these, these things for like a vast majority of this, the season. But when the time comes that it's like, it's really, this is the time to really be paying attention and putting all your effort in hunting. It's like all of that stops. I don't, yeah, it's gone. I don't really eat anything like, you know, there's no exercise happening. It's just, just hunt. Just focus on the hunt. Just, just sleep when you can, eat when you sleep, can. But yeah. other than that, just, just go. hunt. Just, just go. Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's that time. And I, I, and I, I even like hunting in through late season. Like I just don't actually for the last, so I don't know. I, let me even say, I didn't, we didn't get to that part. I, I'm, I live near you guys. I'm just near Pittsburgh. Yep. Yeah. You guys are you know, maybe 40 minutes away, but, uh, you know, I, I grew up hunting here. There was no big bucks here, but I was just so fascinated by the whitetail and, and hunting them. And, you know, I went in my teens into twenties, I was just a killer, killed seven, eight, doe, you know, killed bucks, went to West Virginia, shot two, three, but like, that was like, yeah, you grow and you change, you know, and then into my thirties, maybe I, I got into, I like the challenge, you know, just shooting the, you know, like twenties into thirties, like more mature deer. And then I mm -hmm. went to public land, probably my mid thirties. Uh, no, not even, man. Time flies. Probably late twenties or so. I, I just uh, got into just hunting public land because that was the biggest challenge for me. It wasn't, you know. And then, then after I harvest a fair amount of good deer on public land, I think for the last six, eight years, when I started, I've been running my excavation business, trying to grow that. And it's like I got to the point where you you change as a sport, you like as a hunter, sportsman, whatever. And I didn't really, it wasn't, I would just want to be in the woods all the time. I think I put so much effort into my excavation business that, um, when I got to the woods, it, it was a lot of work, how we just talked about, and I didn't have any more in left in a tank. And I was yep. just wanting, I didn't care about shooting deer the last six, eight years. I was like, I just want to enjoy this. And there's time I passed on a lot of good deer. I just, and then I always wanted to be in the woods, you know, November, December, January into February yep. in Ohio. I'm, I was never, I wouldn't sometimes not kill, not even what, like it was. And I talked to an older friend of mine, a good tracker. And he's like, John hunting's way better than killing. And I said, yeah. well, that's where I was my last six, seven years. But now I kind of shifted a little gear to where, uh, I I'm doing less with my excavation. I got some help and I'm actually, you know, I'm just going to work eight months or whenever to, to make the money. I don't, you know, yeah. what's important to me in life when you get to a certain age. And so this year I'm like, you know, I want to do some, get back into killing some deer. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all good. But even if you don't harvest a deer, the, the amount of time you put out in the woods, you're just, you're just add more knowledge. You know, Man. I think the last seven years, if I would tag you tag, you're out of the woods. What's going on the rest of the year? Well, you yeah. don't know. We talk about that all the so, time. And like, it, you know, it is probably at a certain age and a certain experience of like how many deer you kill, but I can definitely say now I'm, I'm 38. I enjoy just being in the woods and like pursuing the animal and learning in the woods in the off season, just, yeah. just doing that stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. I want to kill a big mature buck, but there's nothing better than just, just the challenge and being out there and like pursuing it. Like, that's what I live for. I live for pursuing that uh -huh. thing. Yeah. That's it, man. And I, I think what I like most is the learning, the learning curve I get, I think with my excavation business, there is no learning curve. I did it all. Like I've been doing it for third, like, and so like when I get in the woods and I scout and I'm looking like, like I'm learning something because you have to keep learning and life. That's why I keep learning and growing up yeah. a new spot. And then I got so many spots and I, you know, over the past few years, I helped other people here. I put them go check. And I love seeing other people have success. You get to that point in your career. It's like, it's not a, you know, I don't, I don't care. Go shoot it. That's just one less. You get rid of that one. That's just one less deer I got to worry about. Yeah, <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? yeah. That's funny. But, um, do you, do you find, cause I know we talked about like jumping multiple States and stuff and Jared and I have done it in the last couple of years. And man, sometimes I just, I feel stretched. Like I, I almost feel like I can't be effective by trying to hunt all of these different States and like cram it into whatever, a four or six week period. I think like, uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to focus on PA, get it done there. And even though I got... Is that because you think that's the hardest one? Yeah, I think that's the hardest one for me because it's so vast. Um, yep. 
But I, I, I know what you mean. You get stretched. You think you got three or four tags in your pocket or whatever. It's, and you're like, I got to do it. I got to get it done. And then yeah. you start getting like dumb. You're just trying to, there's always a point where you, you can make things happen by your scouting and, you know, reading e-scouting or, or whatever it is and learning the land. But, but you get to the point where you need time. You usually need a fair amount of time in the woods. To, you know, oh. there are times when it happens fast, but you can't, depend on that it's like i might have to sit here for four days i mean dude i, I think for <clears throat> for us like where a lot of that stretch thin feeling comes from is that you know we're not only hunting public land we, you know we have some others where i'm hunting in ohio is, is is private land jeremy owns some farms as well and so like it seems like best practices like man we want to make the most of those properties and so it takes time to you know whether it's putting food plots on or you know you're doing timber projects and stuff you know stuff that frankly a lot of public land guys don't have opportunities to, to do because you can't you can't do that stuff on public land and so we you know a lot of our time gets sucked up by mm-hmm. by projects and like not not even hunting just kind of the preparation stuff and well and i think that the, the difference there on the public side is <clears throat> maybe when private land guys are putting in food plots or doing timber project public and guys are boots on the ground scouting yeah like because i mean that is the vital inf- that that is all they can basically do that's right. the vital information um yeah and it just feels like like when we were up at, at uh the allegheny national forest you know last week first of all it was cool as hell to be like re rehone some of those skills you know as you're walking through clear cuts and you're reading sign and you're finding an old sign you're finding a new sign you're putting those pieces together but you know, quickly it was like, dude, we need a, a week at least. <laughs> like three days isn't going to cut it. Like in three days, I may learn two good areas. Then I need four more days to hunt those areas. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's You're right. I mean, all summer it's boots on the ground scouting. And, and like even I have a camp, like I said, just south of, of Steve and I, yeah, but uh, I, I put a little food plot in and I could see how like that's fascinating in its own thing, trying to get deer. Oh, you yeah. Know, like, cut some trees and I have excavation equipment like so um but no it's all the preparation and it, it's all like different no matter where you're hunting and and how you choose to hunt or or, or wh- whatever it is but yeah you know, the scouting is the biggest thing and it's a year-round thing um how does some of that translate Johnny in terms of like let's say you know boots on the ground in the summer you're scouting and I know Steve does that too but you know, here we are sitting in late October, like how is some of that Intel or some of that information that you know about in the summertime translated to now when it's go time? I think it's, um, a lot of historical information. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as summertime, you know, you find the does, um, a a big thing is learning your area with your East scout, like Spartan forge. I used that area has the, the maps are crystal clear and I almost ingrained that map even though you look at it but you look at it so many times you almost become the map like the deer don't have a map right they know that area better than anybody you know so like if I'm in a piece of woods I know I don't need I really don't need that but you look at it to get to here like be intimate with that land and know it how they know it because that's how you're going to make decisions on where to hunt Maybe you haven't, and it's not all black and white. I have, it's almost like you drink for a night and you drink so much that the next day you're foggy. You don't remember nothing. So, <laughs> you know, pieces of the night. So I feel like some of the hunting these deer are like, you know, pieces, you don't yeah. remember everything right? because 100%. you don't know everything. You're not the like, I kind of know, but you, it's these pieces <laughs> of the puzzle. You're trying to work together to see the big picture. You're never going to get them all because you, it's just, you, unless you had a radio caller on them, but yeah. Um, just intimately knowing that land that that you're hunting um where, where kind of where the does are bed you know knowing where the next terrain feature is where this d- ditch is and a lot of these older mature deer are, are lazy not lazy they're just so efficient with how they move and how they breed a deer and it's all so common sense to the easy it's, it becomes easy for them i said we just talked about uh where i hunt it's all i mean i'm 100 yards from the road and it's a great spot but you can't like you can hear car like a number of spots are a hundred yards from the road. And it's like, and you can hear cars coming down the road. It's like, he, he can hear me half a mile up the road. So you literally, what are you going to come down the road and park and get out? And he's like, red flag. He's like, oh, okay, hunters are here. Yeah. You know, so it's like that, that's something you got to deal with there, the, the access coming in. But, um, hmm. but just knowing what act like you're, you're the one being hunted. Like 
where are you going to lay? If you know the guys come from the road, you're going to be back in the woods a mile, or you're going to lay near the road where you can just jump over the hill. You're like, they're going to kill me. Right now, you know, you've got your eyes on a few bucks. What was, was it historical data that has kind of led you to find those bucks in those locations? Or is it just constant moving, scouting camera type of thing? I think the historical data, um, the one area, the bucks showed up. I mean, the rub showed up along the road. My buddy said, hey, let's go check it out. Um, there's a, you know, there's a reason for them to be there. And, mm-hmm. and then we found does there and uh, there was a different types of habitat like there were some cuts and some open areas and stuff like that so that's kind of what put me there um but then also like it's the, the following year like through the summer you're gonna scout and i drop i actually dropped cameras near the road and i don't all i had was does and, and like maybe some yearlings the bucks didn't move they didn't move in until later you know they came in just a week ago off that last cold front a doe hit yep. the scrape and here's seven bucks at it, you know and it's but it's like wow. historically i, I know and usually you're scouting, you see rubs and stuff like that. Yeah. But then again, it could change. Things change. Like if I'm hunting along the road, some guy goes in there and starts hunting. Or, or I left them cameras there. Uh, if I leave them through bear season, gun season, I won't see a buck. They're just, they're, they're gone, you know, because they know when the time to change. But, um, and it's it's always like happening fast and cha- things are changing. It could be hot because the does are there. And then, you know, maybe a doe, they're not there or some, you know, and that's another thing with hunting public land is, you know, pressure is the number one thing that the predators, which is the, I think the humans are the number one predator predator of these deer on public ground. And it's like, they have to live with these humans and, and got to be careful because you could put the pressure on them and ruin it, you know, or other hunters, you might see the sign. So, Hey, that's like, like where I get this. I'm like, Whoa, and everything looks too good to be true. Look at all the sign rubs. It's like, you know, you gotta be careful yourself hunting that animal you right know? and then the other people you don't know if it's like reality like is this really happening is he coming to this spot before you know during daylight because he or or these guys is it all screwed up and it's totally nocturnal you know what i mean and i also keep an eye out for hunters on my cameras where they yep. park and i'm always looking for people's boot tracks and yep. and, and that you know what i mean so what, what are your thoughts uh, you've said it a few times here now but like about the phrase like if you find a doze you'll find the bucks how do you approach how do you approach that um yeah i definitely believe that's the truth i just think you know when when you're hiking in the woods whether it's summertime fall whenever the time just when you see does just put a mental note or drop a pin hey there's does here um and i feel like when when you become and you learn the area like they do as i say be intimate with your land and and you'll like that's what a buck is and it's not always like in my area it's gradual it's not always a worry if you want to hunt the funnel or some funnel i said if I'm a buck and I want to go see that doe over there, I'm not going to go worry about this creek bottom funnel through it to get over. I'm just going. So I feel like a lot of it is is that way when these bucks are trying to get to these does. But if you know where they're at and you, you see like a lot of deer shit where the deer are feeding um, and just in the does roam too, especially in an area that has a lot of browse. But mm-hmm. there's some areas they come through and they and like you just want to be like a buck. Always these bigger deer, I always find them the furthest downwind. So it's like I'll see so what do you what do you what do you do with that johnny so if i mean if you make a note of okay does here whatever they're using a a food source what what do you do with that so i i just uh you know keep running my cameras like i said in the one area um the the scrapes are going to start popping up you know what i mean and then but you they're always going to access downwind of these doe areas or where does feed or not even downwind it's like cross cutting the wind if you got like you know if it's like a yeah. The south wind he's gonna he's he's gonna just work you know east west you know what i mean and, and they're really going to use their nose to smell the does and and hang out there but um always you know think about the wind because that's what they're they're using to their advantage all the time um but yeah just if if, if there's does start running cameras in that area um see and, and the bucks are going to be there eventually yeah. at, at one point and i always have i don't like put all my eggs in one basket if i am hunting one buck I have multiple cameras in an area to find that deer in case something, you know, you're hunting, maybe another guy comes and screws it up or sometimes you could screw it up. Hey, I think my wind was blowing the wrong way or he's seen me getting up in the tree. It's like, what do you do? I put all my eggs in one basket. No, yeah. you can't do that. You need to be hunting maybe another doe bedding area or another place he likes to hang out or I haven't seen him just go like two, 300 yards around. I've seen him seem, you know, they knew where your tree stand was and they would just, 
live around it to still access these does you yeah. know what i mean as long as they're far enough away from it yeah. but like it's you got to be optimistic but you got to be realistic and be like hey did i uh am i putting too much pressure on these deer you know yeah. um, i could be screwing it up um so it is it's a mental game when it comes down to should i stay here um or should i need to move um first i always like lately i've been thinking what, what has put me in this situation? Okay, there's does here. I'm fine with scrapes. I got good bucks on camera. Nobody that I know has been hunting here. Okay, it's, it might be a matter of time. Okay, maybe I, I bumped him one time, but did he see me up my tree or this and that? It's, it's still okay. So you got to you play that mental game, but I always try to like mainly have, you know, I, I got about 35, 30, 35 cameras. That's all I can run a couple of different states, but I always have them mainly for inventory. And then I use the e-scout to find, okay. you know, find, Unit, That's what know. I was going to ask, Johnny. So you're you're using cameras basically from a let me find a buck in in an area that is attractive to me that I want to kill or pursue. And then from there, you're not necessarily using your cameras to pattern them. You're just saying, okay, he's in this area. Now let me look at my e-scouting and boots on the ground to find an area that he's likely going to visit. Yeah, because I think your camera, like, it's only shooting 20, 30 square feet, exactly. you know, 20 by 20. And what can, you know, a lot of these deer, and I, I'm a firm believer that a lot of de these mature deer don't use trails. They're, they're, they're just other, they're other like Bill's um, data. He found like they're just another species. <laughs> and so I just kind of, you know, you're going to just, you're only catching a small area. Now you get into an area where it's more terrain, you can maybe funnel him down, you know, he's going to walk here. But once you know he's there, then you start using your e-scouting. Um, and also try, and there's another thing when I place cameras, you know, I try to get them some close to the road where I can access. So when I was up there yesterday, I hunted, but then I got out and, and I'm, I'm just taking more inventory. I yeah. can get into this camera because if you can get it, if you like, if you got a stand location with a camera, that's, that's one thing, but I'm not going to go check that because I think I might bump deer, you know, but I would have a fair amount of cameras near the road. I can access, see what the nighttime um, activity is. Like I got out, it's, it's, you know, almost 70 degrees. So I checked a couple cameras, see, if, you know, see what's going on. And then the, the, like, even like when I get up there tonight, I'm going to go and I check a lot of cameras at night. I'm going to go down in the woods. Hmm. Cause it's like, we talked about timing is like, we don't have enough time in life. Like yes. it's wearing thin in yeah. that hunting season, the same, you got this certain amount of area. So, I mean, I do it a lot cause I get to a new state and I'm like, we're, you know, I just want some more Intel on, on maybe if they're hitting these scrapes or what bucks are there. So, like, like I went down Ohio there two weekends ago and I, I was in a woods till midnight checking cameras just to see hmm. what, you know, climbing a mountain. So I get up north here. I got the one big eight point. I have an idea where he's at and I study. My, there's one spot I hunt. I got a camera, but I'm, I don't want to go in there and like there's a few spots I have in mind Two of the spots I haven't been to in years. The one has a camera. Um, I'd rather know. And I always talk about when I do other podcasts about knowing everything, you know, not yeah. just hoping. Yeah. Know as much as you can. That's just me. I mean, I'm sure that guys could go out or, or people are like, I just want to get out in the woods and sit and hope something comes by or it's just it's that to them. But to me, it's like, I want to know as much as I can and and then act on it. And Absolutely. Like, I'm going to get in the woods tonight um, with a spotlight, go down, check in other spots, hang cameras, maybe hang a stand and then you know, make a plan for tomorrow. And but do you yeah, think that those that. deer, Johnny, are just it, like when you go and move into an area like that, are you banking that those deer have already moved through there? They're out feeding in a nighttime area, basically. Yeah. So you can go in there and set it all and get out of there before they come back through. Yeah, they don't they don't care about you at nighttime. I walked up on deer. Interesting. Up to them. They don't they don't even. Because, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Like, it, you know, any of us, doesn't matter if you're hunting farmland or big woods, you're in a tree stand, it's nighttime, you know, you you get out and you bump deer walking on the way out and you're like, oh shit, it's Isn't over. It's so crazy. Dude, I, have, I mean, I haven't recently considered how many times like at night with a, you know, even though we try to keep headlights to a minimum, a little green headlight or whatever, yep. how many times have you walked right up to a deer? Like a lot. 10 yards away. and they, But they, they can see at night, right? Yeah, way better than we can. That's for damn sure. I, I feel like they're okay. It goes back to me. Like humans are their biggest predator. And, and when 
it's all daytime. You'd look at, you'd take a buck and if you could interview him, like, do you see any guys hunting you at night? He's like, no, I never see these guys at night. It's always in the daytime. You know what I mean? It's like, so he sees it. It's like, like you see deer, I got deer in my backyard. I throw them apples. If they only knew I had a, you know, I killed hundreds of deer. <laughs> I'm not eating apples off this guy, but, but it's just the same situation. It's all like relative. Like, yeah. um, like these deer have never been, kind of like suburb type deal where sure. they've never been there's no pressure harassed. there's no there's no like threat you yeah. know so it's all about the association they can they associate with being yeah. killed at night by a human yeah, yeah there never isn't any well, or hunted, you know it's funny it when we were in it was kansas a few years ago my dad was walking into pp stand and he had a deer in front of him like he could see it in his headlamp and so, you know, the thing is like, oh, I don't want to bump him. So he like grunted at him and this deer started sidestepping him mm -hmm. like to, to fight him. Oh, yeah. And eventually he was like, hey, wait, look at that. you know, and it's just because I think that I really am curious how well they can see. It's like, really well. It's I mean, so it's rods and cones for for night vision side of it. But I mean, they can see really well at night. Period. So, I mean, what would uh, what would, you know, why would they be sidestepping? Your dad, like I don't it's think, clear as day, a guy. Well, I don't think they know that. Like, I Why mean, not? how many guys do they encounter at night? Purely like that? by association, though? I would assume so. It's all, I think they live, yeah, they live by association. Like, they associate nighttime, no human pressure. And I feel That's like even when you're in a tree grunting, it's got to be like, it's like he hears a grunt, but he ain't going to commit. So, like, I'll even do it. I'll, I do it a lot. I'll take a, my bow rope and I'll hang a stick to it and I, I go, shh like a deer on the walking. ground now that'll bring a deer in huh yeah but if you hear they're like Burr, he's like yeah, no i don't <laughs> see nothing. i'm not i'm not you know what i mean it's like, it's like two things that needs so like at nighttime so your dad walked in and it's all association i never been approached or hunted by a human at night and i'm hearing you know like his i think it's an off switch like it's shut off it's like different living differently at yeah. night where yeah you know this is when i see bucks i hear them grunt and make it like that's a that's a buck you know, it's like, so it's all association. Well, look, at, look at, man, it's so, it is crazy to see, like, they'll leave sign in, in gardens and stuff. It's like, man, places you would never, ever see a deer. Like, I mean, there's, like, there's during the usually, day, but it's like, man, they'll, they'll walk right up in your yard at night. Behind, behind my house, like, I have my, my buck target out that I shoot and every year within the next three weeks, it will get lit up every night. Yeah, they would never night. do that at, uh, during the day. No, cause I'm, I'm there. It's my house. It's my, my kids are playing in the backyard, uh -huh. but at night. Every morning I'll come out and that thing will be destroyed laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Something to think about. But I, I feel they all live by association. Like so you're saying all... we should start hunting at night? Well, I don't think. <laughs> that's what I was going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's where we go from here. Okay, okay. I don't think I don't think you can get away because once they smell you, though, at night, that they still have that association of smell, even if it's at night. Yeah. You're, They're you're, like, you're right oh, there. shit. But I, I also believe all the scouting and hunting, like. Like when I'm hunting public land, there's human scent in the forest. You know? Yeah, Just, you know people. People even talk about how no, I don't want to walk on a deer trail. I, I mean, I walk in in my blue jeans, my shoes. I wear them and excavate. I, I mean, it is what it is. I and I heard that the deer could like smell so many things it's like a Rolodex, but they got to be on that one number. Like, yeah, you know, like they got to actually be like my dog. I used to have a dog, and he knew my smell, my boots. Like he tuned into that. Like these bucks are living in the woods they're not like every moment they're not tuned in to smell that a guy walk here they got to live their life you know it's like you could go you know you can go in your vehicle and get killed how many people get killed in vehicles it's like i still gotta you know i'm still gonna go drive i can't help well it. You, know, you know what though the, the, the and i agree with that johnny the, the the counter argument is and i've you know it's funny to think about this way them deer got nothing to do but survive you know what I mean? Just like, like we have time, like we, you know, we're, Hey, you know, at dark, I got to get out here. I got to head back and we did, we got dinner plans and stuff. I dare's got nothing to do, but survive. You know, the only yeah. thing that interferes with that is have to eat when it's cold and breed got want to breed when it's, when it's going. And I think both, and, and you're absolutely right. So they're already like these mature deer that I'm hunting. They're already tuned in to humans living with humans. Like they can't get away from it. Yeah. You know, there, there's maybe some bucks like Steve hunting up way back in the woods, but these, not you don't go back in the woods and find ten bucks laying. Or yeah, nobody comes back here. Right. They live, they live with humans, and yep. they know that. So they're they're taking the steps. They're using the wind. You know, they're being. Most of them are nocturnal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? 
And the, the, actually, the deer I just in a, when I talk about association, the deer I just shot in West Virginia, he was six or seven years old. But I, I walked so far back in the woods, and I walked around back there and left my, you know. But he was never seen. It was October second. He, I don't think he's ever seen anybody back in the woods. And his, you know, it just turned off. He wasn't worried about looking. Yeah, for he him. didn't know what it meant to associate it with danger or anything. That time of year, so yeah. you know, come rifle season, it's a different animal, right? You know, but just in general, and, and like the wind, he was laying there because of a southwest wind. But we had a northeast wind for four days. I said, I hunt up here. I'm going to kill this deer. He just came up like, you know what I mean? But it's like, hmm. they, they all live with humans, but it's different type, man. Like you're getting your rifle season or, or even like now where I'm hunting, he know like a lot of these bucks, they, they, they in the last five, six years, I guarantee they smelled a human or seen a human in sure. where they live. It's like, they don't dig a hole and bury themselves and hide. St they still stemming from that conversation, Johnny, how do you feel about cover sense? Um, I used to, I'm not crazy about them. I just want to be try to be scent free. I used to use them earth wafers on my clothes. Yep. Yeah. But then I, I, I think it was so strong and the deer were looking up in a tree at me and smelling earth. And it was just, wasn't a, uh, was it natural? Not that was food, what's that earth up in a tree? Yeah. Yeah. Like up in my area, uh, the, the wind swirls, you can't get away from it. So I always That's wear a scent mask. You know, I have it tight, you know, and I put it in a driver dryer every four or five days. My clothes are scent free. I get a shower all the way down to my underwear. I get Your a shower. Scent lock? Like, What's that? Scent lock? Is that what you said? Yeah, scent lock mask. Always wear a scent lock mask. Hood. Mm. Tuck it in tight. Just have this open. Because um, the wind swirls, I, I don't, but I'm confident, you know, and the colder it is, the more you can bundle up and hold that heat in. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I chew, I chew mint gum. I heard mint, you know, like. Dude, have you ever been walking to your stand and just like you, you, everything, you've, you've washed everything, you, you know, taking ridiculous scent measures and then you're like, <sighs> Oh yeah, your breath smells. Breath, breath smells yeah, terrible. getting off a lot of scent. So I brush my teeth. So like, especially I mean, there's areas big, where big I hunt. Buck, when I was, big bucks like mint. The, yeah, they come right <laughs> to mint, you. Mint toothpaste. <laughs> start start selling mint right. gum. Yeah, yeah sensitive. Yeah. They, they don't like big that. Buck gum. They don't yeah, like buck that. gum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like now there's times. But what are you gonna do? Like, so I told it, even the deer. I've tracked did a lot of tracking. Learned a lot from trackers. Did a lot of tracking and. You, you you track deer and the wind swirl like like then the deer like everybody sometimes thinks like the big thing is with thermals and this and like like he's gonna be in a bottom with thermals like I've seen deer walk down with the thermals and them back like it it's not like no it's it not swirls. automatic they're not always gonna follow the wind have it in their nose no it just can't, be it's not possible around. yeah it's not no. possible I think the I the tracking is one thing you know I. I've, not that I always want to have to track deer, but I do love tracking deer. And Jared and I were on a long track on a mountain buck a few years ago and watching how that deer behaved. I mean, I'm talking walking right down the middle of a creek to where I'm finding drops of blood on, blood on leaves in the middle of a stream. And most mm -hmm. guys would have been like, he's gone. We lost him. No, he's walking down the middle of the stream. Like he, all of these things that I think from a mature buck side to ev evade whatever was pursuing him, whatever happened. And you learn so much stuff from that. Oh, yeah. it's unbelievable. In the snow, I love tracking deer in the snow, and I've I've learned from a lot of trackers up north. Like, it's so fascinating that you learn learn what they do. Just you know cutting I mean? trails and, and stuff. And they like jump, like you said. I've seen them jump in the water, and go back up the creek fifty yards and jump out. Yeah, you know, like hey, you ain't finding me. I know, yeah, I mean, and it, there's plenty of times that we overthink these things. Like, I mean, their goal is just to survive in the woods, and like, you know, we analyze this thing down to a, a science that, frankly, some guy in a flannel and blue jeans is going to walk in a hundred yards, sit down on the ground with a crossbow, and kill him. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and that will happen. But in a lot of cases. You know, we're just, there are such small details that are the difference between having a chance of killing them and completely missing the opportunity. Yeah, you're right. And and what I talk about the human pressure is like the longer he goes without seeing a human, like the area I'm hunting is close to the road. I'm like, man, this is golden. I was in here a few times. I don't think I messed it up. No one's been in here. He's going to, and I got him the other night. At, when it front so he's letting his guard down essentially in he's that let, case. Yeah, it's five o'clock. I got him. He's coming. He hit the scrape at five o'clock. I was 200 yards away. But then again, I have a multiple spots like that. I can, cause I might bump them. I might mess them up sure. or yeah. something might change, but yeah, and it's only like association. It's like he, he lived here. He's breeding his dough. Maybe he was here last year and he had nobody messing with him. It's a whole fresh year. And he's, he's still taking all the measures 
to live and survive with humans. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's that he might give up that little, he might just that little might let his guard down just a hair, getting close to the rat. And that's what we gotta capitalize on. You know what I mean? But I I like <clears throat> the humans are there. It's just like they live with them, but that they, they, you know, to where maybe areas you know, they, they don't see humans often. They might live differently, but sure. they live day with humans. Go back to that uh, a cover scent kind of comment there or question. Uh, I am kind of the same way. I, you know, there, for a while there, I really, because I had some luck with it, I like that uh, Evercalm stuff. Mm, yep. um, yeah. But, and I do, I have some in my tote right now. It's mm-hmm. kind of a, a mental thing where I'm like, oh, you know, it's worked for me in the past. There's but, certain like superstitious things yep. that, yeah. Yep, well, but it's I have caught myself a few times this year that I'm like, man, if I can get away without leaving any scent, like I would way prefer to do that mm-hmm. than put a foreign then scent in. Put, even put a you know something that's supposed to be okay, you know okay. Like I don't want my, this tree necessarily standing out to them as like, why does that smell like mm-hmm. deer like crazy? Well, it's the same thing with mock scrapes. Like, do you put scent on them or do you not? Right. Right. I think I, I think the same way is like. Sometimes you're like, you don't want deer around you. Like the doe, you might calm them down. Yeah. With that ever. Yeah. Then you've got deer around you. Then you're like, I can't move. You, you can't know, move. Be, yeah. So there's a, you know, like you said, I try to get, but I do use that stuff from Troy Pottinger, that stuff in my scrapes. For scrapes. Yeah. Yeah. And I use that. And, what uh, is that? Buck fever. Buck fever. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's like they come spray, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mess around. And, but mainly, for inventory still, but I might, I even like sometimes think maybe I'll, if I'm, the wind is like marginal, maybe I'll spray this out and he'll get a whiff of this and he'll come in. Yeah. Cause you always got to, it's like walking a tightrope. I was going to say when I'm in a swirling wind, that is probably when I'm most convinced to use something. And I'm not saying it would be like a dirt earth cover scent. It may even well, be like a doe and estrus type of thing, just to throw that in the air around me you know, at this time of year, not like early season. Well, so that, that's where my, that's, I was leading Ever to the calm. smoke. No, to the smoke. Oh. Uh, so, so like I smoke my, all my clothes, like my, uh, yeah, my, my, my parents have a big wood stove and I'll open that thing up. I mean, I wash it first of all, I want to get it clean and free of any human odor. Bacteria. Yeah. Bacteria yeah. or whatever. But then I'll, I'll dude, I'll smoke the, the, I'll smoke the crap out of it. Cause I, I want to smell like a campfire and I would, right? I would rather work for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I would well, rather smell like I, a campfire I, than smell like even a, a familiar deer scent because I don't think they key in on a, you know, it's or just they a don't, campfire. Maybe that doesn't, you know, cue in a alertness or a, right. Yeah. I don't know. Right. See, I was thinking like smoke, like association. I'm like, wow, that, that, that it's kind of foreign to this area. Like, well, it's not in my area. I mean, there's wood burn. Everybody's got a wood wood stove. Yeah, well, like like so down at the camps where yeah the wood burners are. It's, it's cool, but like when you go up on a mountain or whatever, and not normally okay. up there. Not yeah. is this is this maybe they might check it. I think it's like, but the more they come check it out, the more the chance they could smell your human mm-hmm. scent. I feel. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, yeah, I've always heard smoke smoke works pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I I mean to be and again, you can only do so much with the wind in your control. But I mean, it's just trying to stay clean as possible. And you know, try to Get have lucky. whatever the d- most dominant wind in your favor is. They will be. smell you. There's no matter yeah. what you do. I mean, if a deer stands there long yeah. enough downwind of it, their olfactory is off the charts. If like, it's like if they're look if that's what's up on a rolodex. If they flip to that. Okay, yep. I need to smell. If they start sensing that maybe a human's in an area, we're going to yeah. that number. Well, then that, he's going to really smell. That you is my I mean? thought process with uh, like if they if they walk into that and they're like, and, and they're like, oh, can't fire. They're like smoke. Oh, that's okay. You know, but well, that goes back to the association. If that's yep. what they associate with, yep. they're good. Yeah. If they, associate but if I'm covering that, that with like you're saying, like asterisk, they're gonna be like, I gotta check that out. Yeah. Well, every time they smelled smoke, if they got shot at, then it would be a bad thing. It would be association. Well, because like I would go back to like the so pe- stop talking about it on the podcast and what you're saying. Well, I would go back to like when I when we used to do deer camps in Pennsylvania and used to camp out. Like everybody was around smoke, but at the same time, there's not a deer around there that didn't smell smoke that was getting shot. You at. know what's funny <laughs> I mean, about that the association conversation? It was you know Ben Rising. You know who that is? Uh, maybe I I don't know. He's out Ohio. of shocked in Ohio. He's just a big buck killer. And yeah. uh, a buddy of ours, he is talking about in Ohio, you, you can bait. And he's like, man, so, oh, so many of these deer are getting killed off of corn piles. He's like, I honestly thought about like setting corn piles out and then like waiting to ambush them and just scaring the crap out of them off of corn piles. <laughs> so, so, they, so they would be like corn pile, yeah. you yeah. know, shy. 
The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Dude, where would we be without our Hoyt bows? Probably shooting crossbows. <laughs> or, or a Matthews, yeah. <laughs> One and the same. Yeah. But in all seriousness, we love being Hoyt guys because you stand out. When you're in this room full of other people that shoot these other types of bows, I feel like the Hoyt guys just stick out. Dude, it's just a legit bow. I mean, th th especially that carbon riser, man. I mean, I, I know that they've got several other aluminum lines as well. But for, for me, I'm shooting that RX-5 uh, in the carbon model. They've since come out with the RX-7. And uh, I can't tell you how much I love being a Hoyt guy amongst a sea full of Matthews guys. So we're out there, I think, pr proving them wrong, shooting 80 pounds and, uh, you know, killing stuff. Hey, man, if you want to get serious, get Hoyt. Johnny, do you think, um, like talking about some of these places, and I think we saw it even when we were up there in, in A&F, do you think some of the guys maybe that even think like the three of us who are like, okay, we need to go way back in, we're going to get away from from people and stuff, do you think that we're walking by some optimal spots? Yeah, I mean, there's places I got that, like, that, like I seen that buck when I was spotting along the road, like he, there's a long straightaway that if you slow your vehicle down, something on, on you know, so you know like it's not normal it's like whoa and he's already you know or, or he's laying close to the road here's that door shut so it's like um like the one spot i'm hunting near the road i'm actually going to park a half mile down the road and i'm going to walk up the road in my wool socks then i'm going to put my boots on and go in the woods because it's, it's just that you know in the morning heavy frost yeah. little, like they're laying right there on that flat but like i said it comes down to the deer like it's me i want to know what's going on i do as much as i can to learn but they also want to know what's going on in their area too. So they want to know where the humans come in. They want to know where the danger is. It's not like they don't like, I don't hope for anything. Like I don't hope for anything in life. I want to know, you know, I want to make things happen and they don't hope, man, I hope I don't get killed today. No, it's no, I want no. to know where the guy coming from, but yeah, definitely there's, there's them areas that, that they could be close to the road. And that's the biggest thing. As soon as you slow your car down that they're going to be, moving or be alert they'll be ready for it i mean there are spots i got that are down in the woods but there's also spots and you just got to look at what if the habitat's there for them to be they're going to be there mm -hmm. you know even though but they're going to take their precautions if it's like laying near the road to, to take oh okay someone's coming you know it's it's like yeah like i said just put yourself in their shoes and you want to know what's going on and where your killer is coming from you're just going to be like okay i need to be about 100 yards from the road i can hear i can see you know, you get a day that's windy, rain, and he can't hear the road. Well, okay, maybe an hour I'll go back in the woods a little further, you know, and and because uh, I can't hear where they're I, coming. I from. love them windy days, man. I, you know, yeah. guys are like, oh, it's, a, you know, but you can get away with so much, you know, and that wind's yeah. blowing, it's everything's moving, and, and, and maybe they won't move until a little later, but you can get in some places you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think one thing that we... um when we start to look at this, and this is applicable across the board, basically, but <clears throat> okay, if we start to think about, you know, how these deer, especially when you get into that four or five plus year old age class, you know, that West Virginia buck that you killed was six or seven. You know, these deer have experienced season after season of probably some consistency in whether it's pre hunting pressure or human presence, like maybe the rarity of, of them coming across the human in an area that they haven't, but most of it is very much on a pattern to where they've patterned us. And if you could figure mm -hmm. out how to break that pattern and intercept them in a place that they've never encountered a human, I mean, to me, that's, that's the kill spot. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah. It's a place that, um, yeah, they're not familiar with, seeing humans you know what i mean yeah you catch then, them off guard yeah and then the areas to where they know they're coming they're using everything their nose ears eyes and, and they're taking advantage of that and that's that's mainly the biggest part but yeah you get back like it was west virginia it was back a long ways back and it was like it was so early in the year and it was like he don't see humans back here i can no. get some daylight activity out of this deer yeah you know and there there are like a lot of like up in a &F, there's a lot of daytime activity but it's so random yep. and it's maybe you know, it's times like maybe midday and they've never seen anybody midday. Nobody, you know, it's in an area that's so random, you know, that, that is just like, you know, there's nobody, you know what I yeah, mean? How it's do you like, make no, a pattern? Like, how do you make an approach? And it was funny. So when we were up with Steve, we were, he was talking to Bill previously yeah. and, you know, he's got some of those access to some of those radio collared mature bucks, I think in New York or whatever it is. And, um, 
you know, he was saying like that week that we were out there hunting, like the average mature buck was moving a hundred yards during daylight activity. And like, yeah. I think when people think of even this mid to late October stretch in big woods, they're like, oh, well that deer's covering miles. Like it, he's covering a ton of ground. Well, mm -hmm. maybe he's covering a decent amount of ground at night, but in the day, like he's not moving at all. He's getting up and yeah. shifting positions. That's it. Yeah. It just, and like Bill says, they'll move if the wind changes when they'll make a transition in, yep. in like a bedding area. But yeah, the zero he builds like a zero to 400 yards, but that might be, that's his overall steps. It might be in a circle. It might be in 100 by 100 area. Exactly. It's, it's, I mean, if a lot of them deer in ANF, um, you know, when there's some terrain, you can kind of, you can kind of know, learn where their beds, maybe it's out on a point or, or a ridge, or if it gets hot, maybe in a creek, because kind of they have a handful of places that they bed. And it's tough to isolate, hey, he's going to be at this bed in this time. I'm going to go yep. hunt this bed. It's like, it's not, it's not that way. You know, you can have a general idea where they're at, but you, it's, it's random. You don't, you know what I mean? But I mean, we're in a cut, you know, you can kind of suspect he's hanging out by, you know, satellite net cut with his camera, with the cameras and, and catch him coming to or from and kind of know that he's in there and then you can set up. But a lot of these bucks are leaving, leaving their bed with their, with the wind in their favor. That's their first mm -hmm. step out of the bed is like this direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then again, if, if it is a time that they don't see no hunters and this and that, then they, they could maybe do whatever, you know, they yeah. can move around, but how, how are you going to find that? Like it may be way back in the woods and that, but it, it that's a tough. Like if you're in a, a state that, you know, a lot more open woods, not as much cover, you know, the terrain features that they will uh, attract to that, that, you know, help them uh, survive and, and you can kind of narrow it down, you know, but when you got a lot of cover, and, and I feel like deer, the mature deer that get away, that's like um, terrain, uh, cover, and just something inaccessible. Like remember the three things, and I'm, I'm e-scout, and I'm looking at terrain um, and, and cover, for terrain, for cover, and just something inaccessible. It could be terrain or cover, or it could be like a lake. He's on the other, you know, or on the island. Like, you, can, you know what I mean? It's like it might be that's where he's going to be. And then even hunting a buck, it's, I feel like when I find that buck, it's almost inaccessible. Like he – how am I going to get to him? You yeah. really, that's why he cover all bases. There. Yeah, that's why that's in it. And that's what a, it comes in. Like the, the fringe of the rut now is when he's going to let that guard down a little yeah. bit because of the dose, you know, and dude, our, um, our, our conversation about, um, the, what times of day they see pressure makes me curious about like when we see midday movement mm -hmm. during the rut, like, you know, I, I know most deer, we'll get up and you know morning and evening like yep. that's when you see the most yep. movement but you know we all know that those mature bucks are you know have their own thought process mm -hmm. I, I am curious if they pick up on the fact that hunters are in the woods in the morning and in the evening and I'm sure they do I bet. yeah you know and they still want to get up and breed you know and they're yep. you know i wonder because i you know i missed i missed a you know whatever a four, four or five year old buck in kansas at one in the morning or i'm sorry one in the morning no uh, oops let that one slip <laughs> one in the afternoon and it was it was one of them deals where it was like it was dead it was it was one of them spots too where it's like out in the middle of just wide open you know he was just cruising a fence line and like you know i'm just curious if because i had seen lots of deer in the morning and i saw mm -hmm. lots of deer in the evening but i saw that one mature buck at one in the afternoon crazy yeah i think I, I was hunting Illinois one year, a uh, big deer, public land. And it was, I think it got 75 degrees and got, I've seen them at noon. One of, like, I think it's, it's hmm. like you said, it's because of the pressure that's there in the morning and evenings when they smell the, you know, that's the guy or here in the cars land. Yeah. The guys are kind of tend to be out of the woods, but I also feel like it's when the does are back to maybe they're bedding. This is just my opinion, you know, and everybody else is just like chilling for the day. Like, as far as the deer population and he's other i'm other okay now i'm going to take surveillance and see what's going on you know what i mean yeah. now i'm going to do my movement you know but i do think when you get into the rut the midday is the best best time to catch these these big deer. the best time it's weird but yeah i'd say 10 to 2 you get it it's like hands down like hmm. why you know, why do you think that is i think because uh like i said the rest of the deer are kind of laid up for the day and he can go to them areas and, and check them. You know, huh. it's not like they're out roaming at night feeding. It's like yeah. they're, 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 the does are bedded, you know, and we go check his bedding areas. And it's also like, like I said, he's other. He's going to do the opposite of what the other deer do, the other population, because he's he's different, you know, and he's like, 
now I'm going to do my movement. You guys are all laying down and, 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 and chilling. I'm going to go, um, mm. you know, in, in the night, the sign that was there, you know, when they returned to supposedly return the bed in the morning, the dozing at, they're going to leave some scent or whatever you're talking about eight to 10. And then, then they're going to start moving to, to find that sign. You know yeah. what I mean? I think yeah. it is interesting. And I think it is also the pressure too. Like, like, right. I know when we were younger, we used to hunt, we'd hunt them even through the rep the morning and evening we come in at, you know yeah. get out there before daylight and then it's even with me association like when i was younger i associated with them cold frosty mornings up to about eight nine with not seeing deer like i'm not opposed to going in about eight o'clock sure. right after daylight because i never like i out feel the like same way yeah it's like weird like now nah, they're just chilling <laughs> dude i can remember there. numerous times it was like 7 35 on opening day a rifle and my dad's like you ready to put a drive on i'm like what <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's go, you know, but I mean, that just, that was how I grew up. But, you know, I think that, you know, the more and more you start to pay attention to these big bucks and even during the rut, besides the doe that they're interested in, these deer do not want to be associated with other deer, you know, You're yeah, exactly in the right, summer yeah. they'll tolerate it. But even some of these, like these truly monarch type deer, they're, they're alone the majority of the year. Um, and they choose mm -hmm. to be alone. And so you know, maybe that 10 to two, like you said, most of your deer are back in bed and, and they yeah. kind of can walk around. They don't, they don't want to be walking through an area and this three-year-old comes all jacked up on testosterone, ready to like fight. They don't want to have to waste energy on that shit. You, you know, maybe a yeah. weird, a, yeah. maybe a weird comparison here, but like this farm that I hunt a lot is, is a, a cattle, cattle farm. Mm -hmm. Parts of it are, and there are some, you know, big old mature bulls yeah. and, and it's interesting I've never really thought about this, but like, usually when you see if they're in the same pasture with mm -hmm. one he's another, by himself, yeah. he's off by himself. Just yeah. like, he, he just, don't want to be around anybody. Just tuck, tucked away. You, yeah. you watch the cattle. It's the same thing. Like I've, I've seen him in the field. You watch him all summer. He's over there laying by himself. Like all that. Don't want to be messed with. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Doesn't want to have energy taken out of them. Just, yeah. and when it's the right time, you know, he's going to engage with the population. He's going to be around those does. But I, you know, I've seen it time and time again, like these, these big mature bucks, they don't want to have to fight two and three year olds and, and just, you know, or a four year old that's maybe competitive against them. They just want to be in and do their thing and go back and bed by themselves. Yeah. And it might even be like, they might, and I, I've seen even some deer, like mature deer in areas where the population is high. I haven't seen these deer, like when you think he should be out chasing does first, second, third, fourth, fifth of November. He's still nocturnal, just like that. I ain't dealing with all these kids running around. Yeah. You know, it's like I can't handle it. And then he'll start. I've seen the bigger deer. You know, you get into the tenth, eleventh, twelfth. They'll start showing themselves the weather's colder. Yeah. And they're just, you know, they don't have to worry about all the chasing off all these deer to try to corral this one doe. They're happy with because it becomes down to survival. That's what they learn to do is survive before breed. Cause if they can't survive, they can't breed. So I think these big mature deer become that way. That's like, I'm going to expose myself to maybe hunting pressure and this and that and all these other deer. And then I'm going to like, I, I see a lot of deer up in my way up in a and F is like, they're a, uh, you see, you know, when they're old deer, you can catch them in March, April, you can't even see his rub ribs and you see them yearlings and two year olds. Yeah. They look like a bag you know, of bones. And that big mature deer was one or two years old. He was like, man, almost died. Well, and I around. think that's what I'm we're facing. Ahead. We're facing right now. Like when we were up in north of you in the A and F, like no acorns, right? And so I think that yeah. these deer and and scrapes were dead, right? I mean, they were okay around fourteenth, fifteenth, and then they just went dead until twenty first, twenty second. And I think even though we had that massive cold front, these bucks are basically saying, you know, as much as I'd love to go out, start really ripping up scrapes and covering some ground, there's no acorns my body condition is not going to be good. And I'm about to let the door wide open for the rut. I have to stay put. I have to build fat. I have to eat brows and mm -hmm. I'm going to be patient because at some point it's going to break loose and I'm not going to have a control of it essentially. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And so yeah, they yeah. just didn't move. And I mean, yeah. you know, we just, they didn't see them. I do think too, like you said earlier, they're just, they're, they're more efficient. And so like, I think, you know, if, if does are an asterisk, I mean, they're, they're there, they're, well, they're going to get up at night and go get her and say, Hey, here, yeah, come into this ditch with me for two, day, yeah, two, two days, two days, you know? And then, but yeah, you never see them. Never see them. And then them being efficient. Like I start putting pieces of the puzzle together. They're, uh, they're, they're, 
lazy, not lazy, and how they walk and navigate through the woods. Yeah, they're not falling ass. They're they're not going up and down hills. They're not, you know, like you talk about, like there's near the road. I'm just he's there, like he's just a set, and it's like. He, how, how can he check everything efficiently and not waste all this energy yep. and be right there to know what's going on with the hunting pressure and the people that are parking and know the does. It's like, it's like pretty wild. To, to, and then if you see a deer walking and, or you, you catch him on camp, it's like seeing how he, it's pretty neat. Like, well, and really at cool. night, at night, Johnny, they'll, sh- they'll show you too. Like Jeremy and I both recently have been getting pictures of, I don't know, super mature deer, but you know, three, four year old deer will go and flop themselves down in front of a feeder or, you know, a, a, scrape. a, a scrape, you know, somewhere where they, they know does are going to be coming by. And while yep. they most likely this time of year, aren't going to do that in broad daylight. It's no problem at night. They'll flop out there yep. and just say, Hey, I'll just, just plant it right well, here. Well, I think what's interesting about these big bucks is, <clears throat> you know, when people in, and this is the general hunting public, when, when people are talking about the rut and seeing chasing and all this stuff, like it all sounds great in theory, but if, if you break it down to the guys and it's not everybody, but I say the three of us probably, and a lot of people listening to who want to kill big mature bucks. Like we want to kill a mature buck. That's what we're trying to do. Those deer handle the rut completely different than what we would consider rutting activity. Mm -hmm. Like the, the all out chasing and, you know, and, and just like cruising and cruising and cruising and wearing them. Like that's two year old behavior. It's it's like a gobbler in the spring. Like a two year old gobbler is just going to gobble his face off from the tree, double, triple hammer. That mature bird may not do much, but one on the roost and then he's on the ground and he's quiet the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I think that these big bucks are the same way. I'm not saying you're not going to find one cruising, but I don't think that you see as many of these mature bucks like fully chasing, especially when there's other bucks around. They may be tending the doe and having to keep other bucks off of her, but they sure as hell don't want to have to be chasing and fighting. That's way too much energy. That's not in check with their survivability. Um, it just doesn't align. They want to breed, but survival is first, period. Yeah, if they get two or three does, they're they're tickled pink. That's all I need. Yeah. I'm going to go back. a lot of the deer up in the A&F up north. They'll, they'll lose their horns uh, beginning of December. They're done. They bred. Okay. It's survival time. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's something My, that mine's we. Mine's the opposite. I mean, well, dude, I think, where, I, where I'm at, like we have, first of all, so much food. Way it's, too many it's does. Ag, it's ag and we have so many does. You know, we'll see yeah. deer breeding clear into January. It just keeps their t- testosterone high. And that makes it tough on them population the bucks i think because they have yeah. to keep breeding because they're yeah. but when you're you know your go to buck to doe ratio is fair and the bigger bucks get it and it's like done and it's like oh it's survival mode you know yep. i know west virginia where i shot my deer just a ton of does and this deer might have had a bigger rack if it wasn't for him being stressed out yeah. the max breeding does i'm sure it's like that down there you know had to put all his resources to his body in the springtime to try to repair himself before he started to put it towards antlers yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a common thing. In fact, that's why usually, and it, I mean, we're getting this front right now, like today through Friday, Saturday, I think is a, one of the best times to kill a mature buck because you're going to have the first doe probably coming to estrus. Good chance that the, one of the three of us are going to encounter a buck on a doe, like tending a doe, um, you know, and it probably will be a mature buck because it's probably the first doe in estrus in that area or, or one of the first. Um, and you know, but I think that he's a little dumber. He hasn't been pushed. He hasn't been having to deal with a bunch of other deer yet. Um, and so I think he's, he's more killable. The further we get into the rut, the, the more or the less predictable his movements and behavior is going to be. He's still pretty damn predictable now, even if he is with a doe, you give it another week or so and shit, he could get a, pulled two and a half miles out of the area. Yeah. Like, just like humans, some deer humans travel yeah people home bodies never leave their little town absolutely and- that's well, a, dude, a big one just last night you know this the, the deer that i want to kill this year there's a big eight point and it seems like he's held pretty tight up in this this ditch i mean it's a the look at us right here um there's another five-year-old buck that i know of that like in the past couple of days i've got pictures of him two two miles away <laughs> and it's great i can't believe it when i got a picture of it, it was this morning at like six o'clock yeah. this morning i was like what is this deer doing over here i just had mm-hmm. 
And I, and again, we talked about last time. I think that's the difference between you have an ag land and lots of food that they can pack on the pounds and fat versus some well, of these big woods where yes. they just can't. Also, a difference in deer personality, though. Oh, absolutely. Like, what I'm saying is that eight point is like, I mean, he's probably a little, I don't know, like, which strategy is better? Like, stay in one spot and don't move or just move haphazardly, like, across, you know, multiple acres. Neither one of those deer obviously has gotten killed here yet. Mm -hmm. Probably both the same age. Yeah, I mean, you would think a deer that is occupying more space doesn't know it as well, thus maybe is more vulnerable. And it's going to have to go through more pinch point type scenarios. For sure. Versus that guy who, this is his home area, and he knows it. He knows every square inch. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Stealth Cam. Dude, where would we be without our cell cams? I would definitely be divorced at this point. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I mean, the fact is, is I spent more time checking cameras than I actually did hunting prior to cell cameras. Now, at least, my wife can enjoy me being in the comfort of my own home, buried in my phone, checking those pictures. Yeah, 100%. And, dude, when it comes to... Uh, trail cameras and definitely cell cameras. Reliability is, I think, the number one thing that we're looking for. Stealth Cam just has a long reputation of reliable cameras, and ultimately that is the most important thing to us. They have to work. In terms of reliability, there's not a better camera on the market than Stealth Cam, whether you're talking about the Fusion X, the Reactor, or the DS4K Transmit. And most of them are under 200 bucks. StealthCam.com. Check them out. Johnny, you keep mentioning like spots. Do you have like, uh, like, what does that mean to you? Do you have like pre-hung sets or do you have trees that no, are trimmed it's out? All, um, it, I rarely hunt the same stand twice. You know, I mean, there's these areas like up there at ANF that, or like if, if the wind's right, there's places you can, hey, I, can, I can hunt here pretty often, but it's rare for me to find them spots. Yeah. It's like, I'm always going to like, working the edge like walking a tightrope where the wind's not perfect but you're gonna you need to give him something mm -hmm. to, to for him to be careful to, to move you know what i mean that's why it's good to get sent free but i think a spots it's like so the one deer i'm hunting i might have three spots that i can maybe catch him um another deer and and sometimes it's individual deer just a spot is like where i know mature deer could come through or mature deer is or got him on camera or what have you um, but I probably, you know, there's probably like, I would say four, like right now up Northern PA, probably four places or four deer that I would hunt. And then in that, I would have like maybe two, three spots. So that gives me six, eight spots. And then there's some like other areas that I know are good just being in the woods for so many years Yeah, that like some people come hunt with me. I'm like, try or, you know, and then I'm going to check them and, and there are spots that I haven't been to and years that you know whether they logged it or it just grows up you know and uh you got to keep checking them whether the mast is good you got to go back year after year and check these areas like i know down ohio the the mast is different you know mm -hmm. different trees produce and sometimes it's elevation so it's like you got to go check these spots and on a yearly basis you can't just assume that it's going to be good you know i mean there are areas that are good every year maybe right um but I think I'm always checking them religion, you know, like checking in on spots, but then you, you know, but as long as you have enough areas that you can hunt in case you mess it up or, mm -hmm. or what have you. And a lot of times I'll, uh, maybe I'll be hunting one spot. Maybe I'll move a hundred yards just to change the scenery, but still the same deer or something like that, or we're coming from a different angle on them. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, I mean, it's, that's the whole point is where we, we talk about it every year, but it's like, it, it seems like for where Jeremy and I are doing most of our hunting is that October kind of seems like that, that mobility and most recent information, you know, study and science mm -hmm. stuff is super important. It's like, that's the only way you're going to, you're going to get on them. They're just not moving that far and they're doing pretty specific things and it's different, you know, with play each the, passing Play day. the weather front. But it kind of seems like at the, you know, once you get to November, you know, 80% of your sets is... A known spot you know so, it's like yeah. hey, i got a, yeah. I, i've got a rut spot here mm -hmm. you know if a yeah. buck's in an area i can kill him here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and but, i think then again there's a spot like the buck i've seen along the road spot and that's a new that's a new area yeah I'm like it's uh, most recent information he's scraping he's here and i was like man maybe and i like i said it was thick down there i didn't but i i didn't I just log that in my brain or put drop well, the pin there. You that's know? what I was like, going to say, Johnny. How uh, okay? So let's use that scenario. You drive by, you see that buck, you you find this sign. Like how how long 
in your mind, do you have to make a move on that deer before he likely transitions out of there? I think this time of year, you probably got a few days. He's he's Jeez, laying, he's laying up by the road. And that's you know, what's so crazy. That's nuts to think that. He's there I mean. for a reason. Like the other areas, I was checking scrapes. Or like you said, they were scraping back to 15, 16, yep. whenever we had that cold front. And then they not getting <laughs> scrapes. But this buck's up by the roads. And, 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 and it was, you know, the warmer days here recently and a little cooler at night. But I'm like, he's here for a reason. He's, yep. You know, the only reason I didn't hunt because as you – you know, he, he is there for a reason, not only for the does, but it's safe for him. Safe. You know, and mm-hmm. it's just the human, pre- you know, he's going down. I went down in the woods, maybe 150, 200 yards. There's a sign petered out and it was like beach brush thicket. And it's like, and the thermals are going down and I was sweating a little bit. I was like, you know what? I ain't, I felt like, it, it, I don't know. I dropped the camera. We'll see. I, I, I don't know. I could have jumped up in a tree and a lot is you don't know everything. You don't, you know, yeah. it's, it's a lot of some guesswork, but, but, but I also like this year, like look at the reasons, okay. That put you in your spot, mm-hmm. you know, um, nobody's hunting here. Um, I got a buck here, you know, and then you start weighing your options in your spots, which are most likely there's some mature deer that are almost impossible to kill because how they live and that they roam a lot. But you, and once you get enough spots, you can say, where's my high success rate going to be yeah. what deer or what spot? Because you know if you're going to hunt three or four states. You got to kill something to get to the next state. You know, yeah. I mean, you're going to stick all your eggs in one basket and hunt the one deer and be there all year. I mean, you get, I mean, if he's worth hunting it, but this year I'm not into that. You know, so it's like, um, so yeah. I think one of the big things, uh, the reason I asked that is because a lot of us who, especially, are like really wanting to get on a mature buck, whether it's public or private. You know, our biggest nightmare is is screwing that area up and screwing that buck up, but. I would say that most of us are, are way too conservative, you know? And so in the case of you finding that spot and stuff, it's like, you know, it's October 26. Like, should I make the move now or do I wait a week? And maybe a guy comes in and just blows that whole area out. And I missed an opportunity. Like that's the thing that we wrestle with. I think so much back and forth is how aggressive do I get? And when is it time to get aggressive? Yeah. The, the, the private public thing. Oh, you still with us, John? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I didn't know if you froze there for a minute. The, the, the private public thing is <laughs> is an interesting uh, dynamic to like that whole conversation because I think I think guys hunting private, uh, you know, by its very nature are limited to a, a boundary. Yes, and you know, thus you know, we find ourselves thinking like, man, I I don't want to blow this area out because that's my only opportunity at this deer, you know, likely. Whereas I think a guy that hunts public or you know even just a larger has more access to ground is you know should be willing to get more aggressive to say well you know i'm going to shoot my best shot here and if i happen to to blow him out of this like i'll i'll find a way to make another opportunity at him so maybe it's somewhere else you know and so that's i mean that's a major advantage to public is you can you can afford i think to be more aggressive and like there's always going to be more ground like he's not going to he's not going to leave and he's not going to leave the public area Mm -hmm. completely like you'll find him somewhere else and I learned like just in my experience, like even private land, I've seen guys move in for the hunting season and, and the deer that were living there, they're gone now. Cause it, it, you know, yeah, absolutely. It, it happens all the time. I seen guys that have like a hunting camp up in the middle of 80 acres. They drive right up in the middle. It's like, yeah, they're gone. You just ruined, ruined you know, and I'm like, good. Cause I'm going to hunt right next deer and shoot your deer. You well, know? and that's what I kind of, you know, I like having options of public around my private, my, my Ohio farm has uh, public around it. Um, where we hunt in Kansas, we hunt a lot of public around it. And I like that, you know, having those options that if, you know, if I don't feel right about where I've got on my private, man, I'll jump in on public. And if I blow that spot, who cares, man, I got other spots to go to, you know, and at this time of the year, I think, you know, I'm going to try to do better this year at not being su- super aggressive, but aggressive enough that, you know, what, if I blow that spot, screw it, just go to the next one. You know, because I got mm-hmm. I got four to six weeks to do it in Pennsylvania. I got three and a half or whatever it is, and then it's over. It's you know, rifle you know, it's season. Funny, it's like while you're sitting, and I, I I agree, I agree with what you're saying. While you're talking about getting more aggressive, from an uh, from an access standpoint, I'm considering getting more conservative. Really? Like I was, I'm thinking about even tomorrow. Like I've got these two spots, two banging spots, like right on either side of the mm-hmm. road. And, uh, I've got a good buddy that I, I take out every year for a few days and, and he's here today. Um, 
I, I was going to throw him across in what I think is the better spot to see several mature bucks, and I'm going to sit in one spot across the road that I think is the spot for, the one, spot buck. for one buck. And initially, I was like, I was going to park, right? You know, it's not it's not far. Sure. But, dude, I just, I wonder if... um. If that's not t- getting too close, not I tipping do, them I off. I do think the parking thing is it is it like yeah, they, yeah you're right. What dude, Johnny if they hear was that saying, truck, if they hear stop. it, but I'm talking from just a pure spot standpoint, yes. like getting into a well, spot. That spot that I'm going to hunt though is that's aggressive. Yeah, and I think that's good. And I, I saw I'm with now, you there. Now's yeah. the time. In, in terms of your access, that's the one thing that you cannot be aggressive. I think in your access because that yeah. that will kill you before mm-hmm. you even get to the damn spot. Yeah. Yeah, and that may that yeah, may no, lead us to. If it's wet or crunchy, or frost, yeah, like some of these spots in the morning, you know, and right around that, you know, right around daylight, you know, I can see if you're going in there four in the, four in the morning, you'd be all right. But yeah, yeah, you know, if you get into around the six thirty six, right, you're getting on daylight. They don't hear vehicles, and they don't like here comes a vehicle. Here yep. comes somebody walking in the woods. It's almost daylight. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they know. That's what I, so I think, you know, clarify that. Be aggressive or start to get aggressive on your spot, but access wise, you still have to be very, very sure of your in, especially. It's so important, man. I, and most guys, I would say that most guys don't have bad spots. They just have bad are access. shitty at getting into them. Like they just, yeah, no, I think a lot of guys got good spots, but then they, like my buddy was hunting a spot. There's nobody hunting here. I said, you're going in there every day. You're walking like, yeah. are you effing it up? You know, exactly. It, yeah. You like be real, realistic with yourself and say, Hey, am I putting too much pressure on this deer? Mm. You know, I'm a, and I'm it, a one spot. I mean, when I go into a spot aggressively, I believe that that is my best chance to kill the buck. That first time right. in first hang after that, I know people disagree, but I, I see a diminishing return. Like I feel like every time I'm back in there, my chances are decreasing. That's just me. Though. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I, I think you're right there. I mean, for the most part, I pers- like, I, yeah. That's how I've killed most I, of my deer. I feel I feel that way about October, not so much about November. You you feel very good about sitting a rut spot and just sitting it out. Uh, depending on these factors we talked about, most sure. importantly, access. If you have good access, yeah, that's probably right. Like that, that pinch yeah, spot that I have. Good wind. Yep, that yeah. pinch spot I have. If you goes out, that you know it doesn't matter. That buck's still coming to that spot. Yeah, that pinch spot I have. Goes. I think you could hunt that. I agree. From November first to November thirtieth, and it wouldn't get any. The worse. end of October, maybe first day of November, or so like that's where I'm very much hang and hunt. First time in a spot, best win, catch them by surprise, kill them. Yeah, that's it. If only ever that easy. <laughs> Tag punch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah so. buddy. Yeah, it's like what your plan is doesn't always go to plan. Like that no. deer in West Virginia, I shot him. It was weird, like. But it was like, I was telling Bo, I said, I'm going to kill this deer. And I was talking to Nathan Killian on the phone. He was in North Dakota asking me. I said, I said okay, I'm going to lose service. I'm going to West Virginia. He's like, all right, yeah, yeah. So I went, got in a tree, and I just took a screenshot, like a picture. I said, this buck lives right down here. You know? And then 20 minutes later, I shot. I still him a picture of the buck I shot. He's like, wow, that was that worked <laughs> out good for you. I'm like, yeah, it never. Doesn't you always do that. And I was like, yeah, well, the first time. Maybe it's not like I know what I'm doing. I'm like, you know, like, but it's all, it's all good fun because it is all learning curve. And it is. We're at. And if it was black and white and that easy, it wouldn't be a, like, I look, I just look for the challenge. You know, I'm, I make it harder on myself, I think, just because I, I want it to be, make it. Mm-hmm. Just well, but to- man, the next, the next four weeks especially are just like, it's so freaking magical, man. When you can get in the stand and like this time of year, you just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it, it all could come together in the first 10 minutes or you'd sit there all day. And at the end of it, just say, well, shit, <laughs> now what, <laughs> you know, it's just, just how it yeah, is. That's, that's it starts crazy. all over again. Yeah. 10, ten minutes of your hunt is done. You're like, I waited all, all this time, 10 minutes over, or it could be like, Mm-hmm. That I enjoy about it, you know it, it's so. funny how it starts all over again though i feel like the most passionate or the most excited i am about probably the the land management projects is like right after deer season it's like mm-hmm. it's like i'm rutting when the bucks are rutting mm-hmm. and then afterwards it's like okay let's you know yeah. stuff my face with holiday food Go, couple couple out. weeks and then i'm like oh, i can't wait to get back i gotta you know yeah. i gotta get these antlers i gotta you start these timber Shed projects 
you know, and then it's it's a long off season, so it kind of you know by the time. Well, that's it, man. I mean, we're full of peak testosterone at this point. Oh, like, we're dude, ready I'm to full blow, mess. man. Like, this is just table floating here. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I've been I've been peeing on my tarsals the whole time we've been talking, you know? Uh, and it's like, yeah. that's it, man. It's about to let loose. And, I mean, it, that is, that's what's so crazy, though, because whether, the, you know, I think the ultimate high is, you know, you, you kill that buck. But, dude, it's such a rut. Like, you've been jamming this thing down for 11 months, and like all of a sudden it happens. And I, I, again, I don't want to say that it's a disappointment, but I mean, when you finally punch that tag, even if you're moving to the next date, it's like, that's the first time I feel like I breathe in like two months. Like I'm finally like, yeah. all right, now what? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, and it's an awesome accomplishment. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a, it's a high that, you know, only people who've experienced it can, can discuss, but there's a sense of, uh, not regret, but you know, just, just offness about like, okay, well that pursuit that I've been gearing up for is now over. And, and that's why you want to jump on the next state or the next opportunity. Cause you don't want it to end. You mm-hmm. know, it's truly like an addict. Like, I mean, My, you just, you don't want it to stop, dude. That's what, and I'm, I have an addictive personality and I get into it. And I like, like yesterday I was up there and I didn't even know the day went by and I'm, I was hunting in the morning. Then I was scouting, checking cameras mm. back. I'm like, I could just lose track of life, I think. And it's, it's a bad, I mean, it's good and bad. It makes you it successful, is. but it's like, there's other things you got to be doing, you know, but I just like, no, well, but this, <laughs> this time of year, especially, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like the hunting at this time of year is phenomenal. There's just something about being able to spend a, a, a handful of hours in the woods, walking around at this time of year, finding new sign, yeah. finding scrapes, finding rubs. Well, that, the leaves. That's falling. how you put I those mean, pieces damn, of the man. puzzle together, man. It's you know yeah. that's what we say. It's risky getting in a tree stand because you're tying yourself to one spot. Yeah. You know, it's when you get down and you walk a hundred yards over that ridge that you hadn't you dared to step foot on all season. You're like, oh, shit. Man. There, yeah. This is here's look at all. Here's all these rubs. Here's all the yeah. sign and stuff and. You know, that's why I always, yeah, I always say no, like, no, just like there, know as much as you can about your area and know everything. Even if you push the envelope a little bit, I think, yeah, at least I, I know this. And then you have your, it's like, you got next year and then, you know, yeah, know as much as you can. And then it, that helps. I, I know when I was younger, we'd go out of state and we were afraid to walk in the woods and we set up on a spot four or five days. Like you said, goes by and it's like, I should have been over here a hundred years. That's exactly yeah. it, man. Yeah. yeah. And I also talk, that's why I also talk about these deer, no living with humans and knowing that they exist and they, they mm-hmm. can't get away from them. So there is pressure. So go in and, you know, it's, what if you leave and some other guy comes in and bumps, like goes in there, you might as well be the one to do it and you get some knowledge out of it. And they're, they're all these mature deer They're They don't take many chances in general, you know, that, that just know that. And so then um, whether you walk through the woods and learn more, the yep. more, you know, the, the more off you are. In, in, uh, I think you have to, deer. you, and this is hard because I know I, I still suffer with it. I can say it easily, but it's, it's different. You have to be unafraid to screw up. You, you have to be cautious enough that you're making the best educated decision to get the job done. But you also can't worry about always screwing up because when you blink, a healthy level se- of it is good. The season's over a healthy level. It just, it's just like insecurity is good. Like you, yeah. sh- you shouldn't think you're the shit. Like no, you should be a little you're worried. You're not going to just waltz into his bedroom and sit down well, and yeah. expect to kill him. Because that's what keeps you sharp. But you've got to, you've got to be, you know, if you do everything right and you push the envelope and you bump him. It's okay. It's okay. You know, I mean, had you not even gone even close there, you may have never seen that there. You weren't even in, in the game. <laughs> that's when you run over the fence and then you just hear a gunshot. <laughs> yeah. And then he's dead. Yeah. But there's always next year. Like, you know, you learn from that yeah. experience and. I, all I want to do every hunt is as long as I'm in the game, I'm happy. It, what mm-hmm. tears me apart is if I sit, like you said, Johnny, if I sit four or five days in an area and the last day I'm not seeing anything and I'm like, hey, I'm going to go over here. And it's like, shit, mm. this was where the game was going on. And I was 250 yards that way. Well, that's where, yeah. I mean, dude, we've benefited. At least I have. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how you've been going about this this year, but these speed scouting missions have been yep. so talented. I, I mean, it it's nice to know the land and, and have been out there 
in the summer or the spring or whatever. But like, dude, until I start laying sign and it's like October 15th, mm-hmm. now go and run around them woods. Like, yeah, obviously, if you know there's a buck bed in a thicket, don't sure. push through the thicket. Yeah, but, but look at the outskirts of it, yeah. play the wind, and, and go start, find them. Yeah, go find them. Go find them. You'll learn something. Same, man. Simple yeah, as that. Yeah, definitely. You probe around. I call it probe, probe around. <laughs> probe. Different mm-hmm. spots. And I mean, like, yeah, that's kind of what it is. You just kind of probe, like, just keep filling the area out. Probably you know, didn't start calling it that until you're after 40, like huh? You, said, you don't really want to go for it. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's an after yeah. 40 scouting but You don't want to go into where you're headed. <laughs> yeah. Do we have to wear gloves if we well, do that? That's what I started saying. My buddy that's a big deer tracker, he did Maine and all over the country, and he's so successful, and he, he would go for 10 days, and he would just probe around and learn the area. He wouldn't go in and kill a deer till the last day. Like, it's pretty crazy, wow. but it, so and just, I, I think about that. Like, just calculated? More or less, like, tracking. Yeah. He, like, more or less tracking. He would kind of know he's, you know, just kind of knowing feeling out where he's at yeah without going and then the, the field, last day you know, but, um, letting it letting it eat just go get it go go after you gain all that knowledge you know even in a situation like you said you kind of you, you check these areas mm-hmm. you think you, you know maybe you keep an area or two that you think you might be bedding and you don't go there but I mean, you check all the outlying areas and you throw your cameras and you're just you're just learning learning more about the area then you, once you feel you got enough info then maybe you you can get in See, that's how I do kind of my e scouting now. Is like I will I will look at maps and think of areas. I'll go in at this time of year, find sign. Sometimes put a camera up, but as I start to drop those pins and markers, I go back to the map and I'm like, it it almost puts an arrow right in the place where like, oh, here's where he's at. Then it's just figuring yeah. out how to get in there and kill him. But like, mm-hmm. I never went into his territory. I just found all of this sign on the outskirts or got pictures of him on the outskirts. And then literally when you do that, you can see the block of area he's using. And usually from a good e-map, you could say, oh, clearly he's betting here on these wins. Like it, it's it's not rocket science. You just, you know it. Yeah. Now killing them is a different story. because Yeah, get you can there. find, well, it's like you said, when you find where they're at, it's like, I can't, a couple of times I wanted to cry. I'm like, I know he's there, but I can't get How near him. How do you get him? <laughs> yeah. What do you do? Yeah, like I have a buck in Kentucky. It, you know, and he's not a high scoring deer, but I mean, he's a five or six year old buck and he literally is on a point where it's a dead high wall at the end. But I know that there's enough of a saddle that he can get and bail off of that side if he wants to. There, there's no possible way to like access it unless I literally would climb the freaking mountain to get up there when he comes back. Like, it's just, you know, he's got me in checkmate. I, I don't know how I could ever get in there. If that's sometimes that's what you got to do. It's just like you do something extreme. God, that's the only way. Like you got to be tough. To just th- that's my only option. Well, how bad do you want it? It's like with anything in life. What are you gonna do to get it? You know, like it's that's what it comes down to. Do I have to do whatever it takes? You know, within like the laws and regulations is what I'm gonna do. Because, um, yeah, like I said, that I want to. Yeah, so. Yeah, dude. Mm, what Johnny said, put being a bitch. So I'm thing. supposed to climb like, a fucking cliff and do. try to kill this deer. Okay. Being a bitch, that's what Johnny said. That's it. Jesus. <laughs> Just do what Johnny did. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, listen. Get some repel gear. I mean, it, it, that's it. Yeah, it is what it is. Just get some repel gear, get up there, and, you know, uh, try to kill him. Yeah. Well, listen, dude, we appreciate you coming on, man, and talking with us today. Very um, much. We want to get you on the road so you're pointing north and and hopefully catch this, this front, uh, which... I mean, we've had some really nice weather in October, but I feel like this this should be the one the next two days. Um, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, all, you, we're all putting a lot of a uh, lot of eggs in that basket. So I tell you, I'm not messing with my routine at all. I'm very much looking forward to my uh, Taco Bell stop <clears throat> on, on the way up to That's the farm. That's a bold here. move, man. No, no, no. I I haven't. I've I've stopped at Taco Bell on the way to the farm this year every single time. Wow. Yeah, and I'm not breaking that chain today. There you go. Just make sure you bring the wipes with you. Oh, dude, no issue there. <laughs> no issue there. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, cool, dude. Well, let's uh, let's plan on circling back up. Um, well, dude, why don't you come down and do one with us here in person? Oh, yeah, time? that'd be cool. Yeah, He's I, in Washington. Know, yeah, you're right down the road. Yeah. I should. I probably could have went down there today. I didn't. I said I didn't know where you guys were. Oh, we didn't know where you were at either. Yeah. We can uh, that way we can <laughs> break the whiskey open and we can have a good time. Here. Yeah, let's. 
Let's make we're sure neighbors. we do one. Yeah. yeah, let's make sure we do one when we when the season ends, do a wrap up and stuff, and start yeah. talking about kind of getting into this new side. Or of if things. you kill one, you want to come on and brag about yeah. it. We'd be happy to have you. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Cool, cool. dude. Oh cool. yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it, Johnny. Be safe driving up north, man, and good luck. Keep us posted, man. We're we're anxious to to hear what you're getting into. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, All right buddy. Man. We'll see, see ya. ya. Sweet. Uh, well, that's awesome, man. I mean. <laughs> Again, you start finding these guys like Johnny who just Johnny. Are, they're ate up with it. You I forgot know? to ask him about an apple tree. I thought Johnny never apple felt tree. appropriate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just he'd be like a never heard that. Not to be before. confused with uh, John Stewart from The Daily Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, it just ate up with it. Um, oh, interesting. I didn't even consider that one. I think we got on a really cool discussion there on the whole um, th- like the relation. You know, to whatever the deer experience I did not have is. Sexual relation with that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Relation um, with what? Just like it, the night encounters, or oh yeah, where, you know the smoke. Interesting and, to 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 yeah, put yourself in the shoes of a, a, deer, a deer, or more specifically, yeah, a big buck at night, or or even during the day. Well, because I feel how like they we, perceive human pressure. We tiptoe around the night thing a lot. Like, I mean, dude, when I'm in a stand and there's deer around, like I'm frozen. Like I'm just not doing it. Or when I'm walking out, I'm like crouching down, and it's like, well, I'm walking. Like, do they know what I am? Are mm-hmm. they going to be fearful of like what I am? And case in point, like last year that Columbus 200, I was on the ground checking a camera when he came out at like 15 yards and was looking at me in at dark. It was past dark. Yeah. And the next day, I almost killed him. The smell does it for him. They they don't like that. Yeah, but I think that the just like to visual encounter, they're just like, eh, I'm not sure. I almost even wonder if the, if they can put together like, it, he can't hurt me at night because like I, I've just never because they can see it like when they see you during the day, like they know what you are until the spotlight kicks on. Then they're like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's a red dot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you definitely like I've 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 for sure have bumped deer at night and you know, hunted it the next day and have seen deer again in there. So yeah, it's weird. I told you the other day when I was walking into, to the pinch there, it was like that deer was 30 yards from me. Probably saw me coming across the whole field there. Mm-hmm. And then just at the very end was like, Oh, it's a person. I wonder if they, you know, cause they rely so heavily on scent that I wonder if like the visual of like, here's a hunter, I need to boogie versus like, I catch that like, you know, foreign scent, which one of those disturbs them more? For sure, scent. You think so? A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, because it... Because um, most, most times they never see you. They just smell you they and smell they you. know. Well, and, and we've talked about this before, and until you have a few encounters, like, it's hard to, like, fathom it, I guess, in your brain, but the number of deer that you never see because they smell you is astronomical. Astronomical. Those big bucks that end up downwind 200 yards away in the timber... And you never lay eyes on them is is a lot more than you think. You know what's another one too? I don't. I'm sure if they smelled you, it would still be a problem. But have you ever ridden a horse past a deer? Yes. Yeah, they don't uh, like but, seem to mind. Mm-mm. Not nearly as much. Like they kind of stand up and look at you. Well, I mean, the deer. I mean, I plenty of times if I take my headlamp off and I walk through a field and I know there's deer 15, 20 yards from me, and they just maybe they bound off a little bit, but they don't care. Yeah. Better just be way safer than sorry. Just ride a horse at uh-huh. midnight mm-hmm. to your spot. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, well, and I say that mainly because as we get into this critical time period, and if you're listening to this, you're kind of towards the end of this critical time you period. Missed it. You missed it. <laughs> uh, the the like you know mobile hanging and the the putting cameras in areas you know after dark I think is a very valid strategy. Yeah. Um, a lot of people I know maybe aren't comfortable with that. I think you and I probably are like, I'll go in and hang a set in dark. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Um, but it is a, it, that's a really unique strategy versus the, the gut is, well, I'll do it in midday. I don't think that's in this time period we're entering right now. I don't think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Well, just don't do it thinking like, Hey, this is my, my window here, but just, you know, do it cautiously and, mm-hmm. you know, hunting as you're going. Mm hmm. So. Don't don't leave your bow anywhere in the truck this time of year. I'd carry it with you. You got to go drop a deuce. You take that bow, take with, that you. bow with you. Yeah. yeah, don't leave it. Don't leave it anywhere. Put it in your chair next to you and you'll be ready. Uh, well, cool. Well, that is episode 100. Holy shat balls. 100. That's pretty impressive. Hey, hey congratulations. Nice. 100. Well done. 100. Everybody on the floor as well. Great job. Hey, great job. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the audience crowds down. Uh, 
yeah, it was, that was pretty cool. Um, you know, it's been something that we kind of set out that goal in January, 2020. It was like, Hey, let's just lay one of these freaking things down a week. And, and we haven't missed, man. We have not missed. <laughs> We've only increased. We may throw a couple doubles out there every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, first of all, it's November. If you're listening to this, it's November. Um, is one of the best times of the year to be in the woods. <laughs> You think people are like, we get it, dude. It's November. We know. We got to be in the woods. Listen, it's November. <laughs> yeah, you said it a billion uh, times. <laughs> but yeah, listen. Do to, it. Yeah, do it. Dude. Listen to the Hunter podcast going to and from your stand and get out there in That's the woods. cool, too. Okay, number 100 with Johnny Stewart in the books. We'll see you next week. Later. It's take me over.